chain of dependency. That's what we need. That's so what yeah, we've uses. we've exhausted Good. we've exhausted we've already you've just explained all the reasons why there needs to be a necessary being. We already agreed uh, about that at okay. the beginning of this. No, no, debate. no, but no, no, but no. no there's no, two things. Wise in the universe, we would say the same thing can be used in without the pieces that constitute the universe, you wouldn't have the universe. So you're saying like mathematics, these constituent parts can be merely conceptual, they don't have to be physical. So in that case, God is in fact made up of constituent attributes, which are conceptual. He's all loving, he's all powerful. I, well, well, let, let me finish the point. I know, I know, but what, what, is, what, what do you believe God is composed of? Okay, well, that, that's quite clear from the Old Testament in both religions. But, no, no, okay, yeah, keep, but keep going. Yeah. The point, the point yeah. I'm making is that God is composed of constituent parts, so he's not a totally necessary entity because he depends on further attributes. So I oh, I know, it's, it's a good interrogation. It's not, once again, it's not an unintellectual one. Um, it, it's interesting because this is the same interrogation that Richard Dawkins has. In the, This is one of his only arguments, actually, on these, on these matters. But Richard Dawkins had, and this is my response to you, I'm just giving you. Richard Dawkins had a debate with the uh, the ex-Archbishop of Canterbury and University of Oxford. I'm not sure if you've watched that debate. And the um, and the person who was moderating that debate was actually Anthony Kenny, once again, the same atheist, by the way, philosopher, who made this interrogation that you're putting forward, which indicates that you have maybe read the literature or you're aware of the arguments. But he himself conceded to the following, because Richard Dawkins said exactly what you're saying, that uh, Richard, which is that if God is complicated in the sense that it's made up of many different attributes, which is the normative Islamic belief, that we believe that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all so on. If that is the case, then within, you require an explanation, to put it in Leibnizian terms, which is going to push the, f the problem backwards, you know, in terms of now you need an explanation for this complex agency which you're referring to as God. Anthony Kenny got involved into the discussion. He said something very interesting. As an atheist, it's, it's even more powerful because obviously he doesn't have that bias. He said, if you compare an electric razor with a cutthroat razor, an electric razor is made up of more parts and is less functional than a cutthroat razor. A cutthroat razor is made up of no parts, but it can do more than an electric razor. Richard Dawkins retorted and he said, Richard Dawkins retorted and he said, that, what do you mean by that? To which Anthony Kenny replied, he said that, well, the cutthroat razor can cut an apple, but it can also cut a throat. To which the Oxford uh, University audience started laughing, and to which Richard Dawkins had no response. What I'm saying is, it's fallacious uh, uh, to equate a part or a piece with an attribute. Because an attribute is a description of something. So we are describing the essence of God with adjectives. That's what an attribute is. Whereas a piece is something that can be taken out and put into something. If you want to put it in modal terms, the difference between necessity and impossibility is that necessity is that if something is taken out of existence, that existence wouldn't exist. It would lead to absurdity. Whereas with impossibility, it's the exact opposite. So in other words, this thing cannot be in, 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 any, in any world, possible world, it cannot be in reality. Like a squared circle, for example. The point is, when you take something out of reality, which is a possible existence or a contingent existence, like the pieces of the universe, for example, me or you, we, we didn't exist at one point, maybe yourself like 25 years ago, I don't know when, how old are you? 20, it's my birthday today, actually. Whenever, you know, you're yeah. a young man. Strapping young man, nice, uh, nice suit yourself as well. Very I like good. these badges. You yeah. look like some great military to taste with. Oh, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People want to hear you. No doubt about it. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Big one for you. No, no. Let's let's stick with the argument. So the point the, the point I'm making to you is the point I'm making is that. If, so a contingent existence, if it's not in existence, it doesn't lead to any absurdity. 
because 20 years, 25 years ago, you weren't in existence. Meaning that that didn't lead to absurdity or it didn't lead to any, that the entire existence would not be in existence. Yeah, but so not necessary. Exactly, so not necessary. exactly. Sorry. It, exactly, yeah. If you define a necessary being as something that doesn't depend on anything else, then I, do, I still don't see how um, you can define God in those terms if you include the wide attributes that are associated with him, because he is a composition of an all-powerful deity, um, a, a, an all-knowing deity. Yeah. The list goes on and no, but, on, but he's a constituent of all these different attributes. All right, so what I've said before, when I, when I differentiated to you between a part and an attribute, was that intelligible but to you? I, it was, but I feel like you were, you're this retreating into a linguistic realm. No, okay. I, mean, I could replace... So even, even if we give you that... Right. So, so there is a necessary being that okay. started the universe. Pardon? There is a necessary being that started the universe. Yeah. Why does it's not, not necessary necessary, being... By the way, sorry. It doesn't have to be that he started the universe, by the way. But it's fine. Could, okay, so... so that the universe there, depends there is, upon. There is a necessary being which all contingent things depend upon yeah. for their existence. Yeah. Yes. Why... What, what qualities can we attribute to that other than that is necessary? Right, so... I, you've done... Right, you've, so other, other than it's necessary, what can we... Uh, no, but the, the thing... Right, right, right. No, you've, you've, you've already answered part of your own question. Why? Because necessity implies eternality. For example, in the in this field of mathematics, 2 plus 2 equals 4 is a necessary fact, such that you cannot okay, readjust... They exist forever. Yeah. So, no. there you have it. So, but there you have two attributes, in fact. You have pre-eternality and post-eternality, right? You can subdivide that into two different categories. And obviously, what we're saying, we're speaking in negative terms. So, something which hasn't got a beginning or an end is pre-eternal or post-eternal. So, we've already got two here. Necessity indicates that lack of dependent quality. So, it doesn't need anything else, which in the Islamic parlance is referred to as samadiyya, which is that everything depends upon it and it depends upon nothing else. But then, if we go into that direction, then a lot of other attributes start to to be clear. So, for example, the fact that God is the maintainer of the universe, or that, that this necessary being is the maintainer of all that exists. It maintains it because without its existence, the universe would not exist. Therefore, Do you it's... Get morality at any point? Well, hang on, hang on. The, the great advantage that we have is we're merely arguing in terms of probability, and it seems like you're arguing it in the realms of certainty. I haven't heard any argument you've made. Well, I, all I'm saying is that there is a universe, and I don't claim to know how it was brought about. Uh, we can only uh, know, we can only see the laws of the universe. We can only see how we interact with those laws. And I think if we use Occam's razor, don't multiply entities beyond necessity. Don't say, you know, there's a, there's a world, and at the centre of that world, well let, let, well, let me just finish. And, and let, let's say, let's take gravity, for example, okay? There's obviously gravity, and we can explain that mathematically. Um, but then you add some additional beast existing at the centre of the unit, uh, at the centre of the Earth, that draws things into it, as well as gravity. There's no need for that beast. There's no need for it. So why include it in a, a theory that encapsulates and describes gravity perfectly? So that's what I'm saying about the universe. We've seen the universe. We've, yeah, we've seen the universe of us know its laws, we can understand and describe them, we don't need to refer to any additional day. What you've got to do, what you haven't done, explain to us how this universe came into existence. Well, I mean, I'm sick, I don't no, no, claim no, no, I can, no, 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 but you this. can. No, 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 no. Stick, with stick, stick with what he's just asked. Yeah. A simple question on this is, why is there something rather than nothing? That's the key, that's that's where it comes down to. Yeah, okay. I don't know, Okay. but okay. I, and I'm what trying to say? understand why you're claiming you do. No, 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 okay. you're saying there was a... Ne there's no, no, a ne no, 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 what you said. You're no. saying that the, the existence of the ne necessitates a necessary being. But the, the That's very, not what you said. But the very idea let's that the universe began... No, let's do what you said. Space don't change, don't move the hang on, hang on. Let me just... Uh, the, the universe is space and time. And, and you need, um, you need objects in space. And you need cause and effect within let's time. Let's the conversation and as it was. Universe, what was your name again? Oh, yeah. Okay. Business Kerry. 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 You said it's more probable there isn't a God. Yeah. Right. So your probability, your math 
for money. Whatever you've done, whatever you've reasoned, yeah. you come to a probable idea. It's more probable that this universe, as I've always existed, brought itself into existence, finely tuned itself, created carbon in stars by itself. No, 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 no. Listen. I am. No, 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 no. I am. No, no, no. I am. Yeah, yeah. Carry on, I'm carry on. on. I'm not saying anything. And then, and then you believe that this, this carbon sometimes created this kind of magic custard, and then this magic custard became the, <laughs> the first living cell on Earth, and then this first living cell kind of created information from nowhere and created new proteins and became new organisms and evolved into fish and this fish became man and then this man is what we are today, right? That's your claim. So I want to know why you believe that. Okay, all I'm... The only claim I'm making is that I don't... I don't that is your claim. No, I, no, I'm saying I don't know. No, you said it's more probable. I'm saying it's more probable. Why? Yeah, that's right. Because we only have the... Li we, we can only why base... Is that? I can only base this argument on what I can directly see. I can see the laws of the universe. I can see how we interact with how, that How can universe. you see that? Oh, sorry, uh, sorry to cut in. You say you can see the laws of the new universe. Yeah. Well, 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 no, we're, we're not, <laughs> no, but we're not floating off into the not atmosphere, are we? I'm not seeing you floating not, off into sorry, the stratosphere. I, I, what's, what's his name again? Strabo. Strabo. And you're... Uh, Mohammed. Mohammed. Strabo, listen. Uh, the laws of the universe are not actually something you can detect. Well, of course, I, I can yeah. feel them. That no, exerts no. it upon me. No, let's, let's get some basics right on this matter, right? The laws of the universe are just an expression of some patterns that physicists or other people... Yes, yeah. Now, it depends on what uh, epistemology one takes. Because if someone says, well, if a nominalist argues the universals don't exist in the real world, then by extension, laws of the universe don't exist. So for example, if you said, I see the laws of the universe, can you prove that laws of the universe exist? Not, not universally, but I can prove they exist now. I mean, we're not floating. No, 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 no. Yeah. But, but, you know, I can't I, prove I, they exist everywhere. But. No, 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 but, 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 no, no. But laws, laws, by definition, are an expression of more than one instantiation of a particular. You can't have a law with just one particular. You need to have more than one instantiation of a particular. Therefore, my question to you is, you just said that you, you're pretty convinced of the fact that there's laws of the universe. Uh, can you prove those laws and show me how they exist under a microscope or through the empirical method, how we can come to the conclusion? I can't. No. Okay, good. So uh, the, the, you seem, to, okay, there's issues here. You're, you, you're, you're certain at one point that there was laws and then when you described what the laws are, you now realize that you've taken an agnostic position or in fact a skeptical one. Uh, you say you're making no claims, but then you, you say that it's more probable that the universe basically uh, exists without an explanation. But these are all jumbled uh, uh, kind of uh, points you're making. Well, can I just say that you, you mentioned epistemology, and epistemology is grounded in language, and the laws of the universe is purely a language to describe natural phenomena. Okay. The way we're conversing now is a language, and we, we have one central concepts between us. We're chipping away at using language and the the main difference between us is that I don't see how a necessary being, uh, the universe is nece uh, ne necessitated by a being, by an entity. Okay, no, but, but you're saying so, okay, my question is do you believe that you exist? Well, I, I, I hope so. Yeah. Right, right, okay. It, it does, does, he, does, yeah, it, does the universe... I'm pretty yeah. sure. Has, no. he, Sorry, has he conceded the necessary being yeah, I, let's, let me ask him. Yeah, let me. So, but at this point, let me ask you the question: Does the universe exist? Well, I hope so. Yeah. Ha, okay. Is that yes or no? Well, I'm sorry. Can't be sure, but yeah, I'm pretty certain. Okay. So, so the universe is an expression of what? An expression of stardust, random. Well, what do you believe? I, I'm not what asking you. Believe. What, what is the universe? What, I don't understand the question. What is the universe? Really. What is it? Yeah. And it's an aggregation of stardust, us, okay, great. trees. Okay. No problem. Okay, good. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good universe. No, no problem. I, and that, I, and Especially that, with this. Okay, yeah. no problem. Well, that universe exists. Uh -huh. Yeah, it exists. All right. Does it exist necessarily, or does it exist contingently? <laughs> Is the universe dependent or independent? It's, well, 
Felix what do you think I think it's I think it's I think Felix it's knows the answer well he's he's actually Felix the physicist I, I think I think I don't know I, I really don't know but that's it where might, my, that's it why it's necessary that something exists no no you can see the necessity no but no no my question I have I have one question right now I'm just asking I'm not sure I'm not sure no no I used to think like you guys okay okay can I say something yeah of course it's very late so you can go to the academia in a minute yeah of course I used to only I would say it was like you guys because you guys seem very very intelligent <laughs> right but the point being made is I never believed in a creator I never believed in God never believed in religion alright mm. this was now over 20 years ago then I come to the and then I had conversations like this and I said you know what why would why should I believe this universe caused itself created itself finally tuned itself and you know the magic custard and, and the, and the uh, origin and the fish and all that business I couldn't buy into this the idea this is all random so I came to the conclusion there must be something that caused this but I'm not going to say it's God I'm not going to go into religion or anything like this but I looked at the creator because like, you asked a very good question what was you asked a question you asked a question about what what attributes can we uh, infer from this what, what necessary attributes must this creator have well we obviously said it's got to be have the, the, the ability to create it's got to be powerful as I say to my mate Yal here that there's nothing we know of that is powerful enough to create a universe so whatever the cause of the universe is must be more powerful than anything we know yeah would you agree yeah, yeah or it is so like you say ability to create or, or it is necessarily the creator so it cannot do any other than but if that, no no but the point is isn't it are you saying that the, the effects of the cause is, is, is no, he, he, I, 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 he's making he, he's made so, 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 let's, 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 let's un- respond to that again yeah. oh. I want to disentangle a few things yeah, please, right, please. But then I need to say something well, about you're going to bash tonight. me no no no, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no, no, no. He's, he, he makes a point which is that you know uh, how do we now establish the difference between that God is is, uh, determined to create or is emanating whatever it is that he's got or this necessary existence is emanating whatever it is he's got which means that there's no other choice but to create <laughs> or that he's cho- choosing to create yes. so the will, will. Mm-hmm. so with that I just wanted to put in there that there is a separate argument for that which we can articulate in a, in a, in a moment we got to with Yal. But that, that, there is a separate argument for that it's, it's called the argument of particularization so we'll come to that in a second but yeah go ahead so going back to that the idea that the universe caused itself or causation I think we, all our concepts uh, come come to us through experience if we were locked into a, in, in a dark room for an entire lives we wouldn't know anything our minds would be totally blank canvases if we, that's, that's if we were depri- well, if we were deprived of all experience, what point did I make? Well, the point, my, the point I'm making is that we live in a world where there's time. I, it, it, it takes me time to move, move like that, and it's also causation. I move from one state to another. Now, th- this all occurs within space and time. I need space to move, and I need time to move within. But and, and that is essentially the universe. When you step outside the universe. That these con- these concepts break down. No, but so they're, 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 sorry, yeah, we, and, the, and, and all our concepts that derive from these experiences within the universe break down. So it's actually uh, okay. a, anachronistic okay. no, no, to talk about just, the universe no, 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 causing itself yeah, yeah, or starting so, so, so itself because so, so, there was no time, no space. So you can't even imagine how, what uh, started uh, 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 there. Uh, uh, okay. So I, are you now saying the universe is eternal? I I, I do I. I I'm saying I don't know, but I'm saying it's right, an well, anachronistic if it's not, question. If it's, if it's, so if it's not eternal, if it's not eternal, the universe caused itself. So. If it's not eternal, oh. if it's not eternal, I mean it had a beginning, and then. Well, that, that I'm saying that no, question is is no, if fundamentally if flawed be, uh, to begin with. But no problem. Look, here's what here's what I will say to you. Look, you've just said a few things about causation. All right. My understanding of what you've just said, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that you basically you're you're you're, you're citing the fact that time is distance over speed okay very simple movement is therefore correlated with time movement is time time is not unintelligible without movement you can say this right you agree with me correct you're a physicist so movement and time in this universe especially considering like you know the Einsteinian yeah. okay no problem so the, no issues here's what I'm saying to you here's my response to you my response to you my response to you is 
The argument from contingency does not require ca causation. Causation vernacularly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Let me just. True, okay. Yeah. Number one. Causation vernacularly. Well, let me. I was let, responding let me finish. to his. No, no. Points, but let, me, let me just. Let me just. Uh, let me finish. Let me finish. There was a beginning. Okay, you're, 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 you're kind of interrupting me right now. Let me just finish because I did let you speak. Yeah. What I'm saying is. Causation, vernacularly, is defined as something which brings rise to phenomena. Most people who define it terminologically through the philosophical literature, they define, they can define it in more than one term. Like it can be that A, this, so there's sufficient causation, there's necessary causation, there's different types of causation, there's even retro causality. Now that people are talking about causation happening backward, basically, right? And then you have the grandfather paradox. All of that is irrelevant to this discourse. Because what, when we talk about dependency and contingency, dependency and contingency is irrelevant of causation. You can have, it's intelligible to have contingency without causation. So right now the word causation is not really relevant to this discussion. Because what we talked about is contingency and dependence. Dependency or dependence is vernacularly defined is that something relies on something else for its existence. Now you can cause something into existence but it doesn't depend upon it. Let me give an example. I can cause my children, I've got three children, I've caused them in a sense. You know, I'm not going to go into the details of how that, ha that happens. So you're going to have to. I yeah. really or or I, can, I can build something. I can build a house. You see, oh. you can build a house. Maybe you, me and you can build a house together, no problem. But when we both die, the house will continue existing. But the, the house will continue existing, but, that, but we will be dead. So in other words, the house does not require me in order for there to be continued existence. Therefore, causality and dependence are not the same thing. Dependence is an inextricable relationship between two entities, whereby B is in constant and perpetual, you know, uh, requirement or, uh, or reliance on A. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I'm saying, can't the universe be like the so, house we built? No, no, but so, 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 so. so, 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 so he's about well, like, who like built the house? Ground okay. So what I'm saying is, so, so just to cut you off, what I'm saying is the question of self-generation is if, if you say well the universe can create itself so it can be there not be there at the same time you can say that maybe there's retro causality I say the issue is not even in this the issue is that if you say that the universe depends upon itself you're effectively saying the universe is independent in which case you're saying the universe is you're, you're, you're effectively accepting the, 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 the first premise what I ask is is the universe dependent or independent if you're saying that well the, the, the universe the universe doesn't depend upon anything, then this means that the universe depends upon itself. What I'm saying though, however, the problem is the universe cannot be independent because the universe has constituent pieces, parts which, which make it. Things which can be taken out of it or put into it, some things which if didn't exist within the universe, no absurdity would occur. So what I'm saying therefore is that on those grounds, anything that is made out of pieces, it's like this, this bottle, all right? It's made out of pieces. Can you see? He's got a bottle lid. I can take it off. You see? Yeah, yeah I, mean, I can do it. A new really I, can, I, can, I can do it. I can. So anything that is made up is not is contingent. The universe. So what why I'm saying, can't the universe be contingent? Okay, great. Good, good, good. Why now, now we're there. So if the universe is contingent, then my my point is this: there cannot be a world with only contingent things. There has to be a necessary thing. Because if there was a, if there's a world with only contingent things, it goes back. And no, back. I'm not even making it's an infinite regress. On it I'm, on I'm, I'm, not, else. I'm not even making a point. I'm not even mentioning infinite regress here. I'm saying there cannot be a world with only dependent things. That's my claim. My claim is you cannot have a world with only dependent things. Because of the infinite regress. You, well, here's the reason why. You've got three ways this can happen. You've got one way where it can be, there's, let's say, let's br bring it back in mathematical set terms, yeah? You can, you can have dependent things which are finite. And the finite things, they're subcompartmentalized into two different categories. Either they're finite and linear or finite and circular. If they're finite and linear, then A cause B and B cause C, which means A cause C, 
And if A cause B and B cause C, and therefore A cause C, that means A is the is the cause of everything. Or A, do you know, A is everything depends upon A. If it's circular, that means A cause B and B cause C, and A therefore is the cause of its own effect, which is uh, which is impossible. So 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 I'm not saying what I'm saying is you've got two options. Either that is finite or infinite. In, 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 if it's finite, if it's finite, then you have either linear or circular. Circular is impossible because then the causes will have to be, like we, we talked about, the issue of independence and dependence. We already talked about that. It would be fallacious. Now we go to the infinite. You can have a world with an infinite number of dependent things. <coughs> but the question is, if the infinite number of dependent things, two questions, can it be conceived differently? And if it can be conceived differently, then in that case, it's not necessary because a necessary thing can never be conceived differently. Another thing is, is that made up of pieces? If it's made out of pieces, then if you remove or add one dependent thing or add a dependent thing into that set of dependent things, which are infinite, then you would be contradicting. This would disqualify it from being necessary because something which is necessary cannot have anything added or removed from it. Anything, anything that is susceptible to, to addition or subtraction is contingent. The universe is susceptible to addition or subtraction. Therefore, the universe is dependent. The same thing can be said of an infinite ver universe. I say the same thing of an infinite. If you have an infinite multiverse, anything that is susceptible to addition or subtraction is dependent. An infinite multiverse is uh, susceptible to ad uh, additional subtraction. Therefore, an infinite multiverse is dependent. So you have no choice but to go back to something which all dependent things must depend upon. And had that not been the case, there would be no dependent things. That's why my proof, therefore, of the fact that they cannot be dependent things is that with dependent things, uh, depending upon dependent things, either finitely or infinitely, you can never, um, you can never have an ex explication for the preponderance of anything. That's my argument. Yeah, but we're, we, we both originally agreed that there has to be a necessary thing to prevent that that beautiful that chain of dependency. That's what we need. That's so yeah, we've is. we've exhausted Good. we've exhausted we've already you've this explained all the reasons why there needs to be a necessary being. We already agreed uh, about that at okay. the beginning of this. No, no, debate. no, but no, no, but no. no there's no, two, no, th there's two things. There's two things. Is that necessary thing? I, yes, I, yes. Then I did ask it. Yes, where, yes. Why can't it be contingent? So I, I look. I fully accept. No, 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 no. But uh, okay, one look. more thing. One more thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we, I agree. This, with this, this stupid question. It does. It's not a stupid question. No, there has to be a necessary yeah. being. Good. To, like a foundation to yeah. stop yeah. Yeah. that, that regress. No, after everything he just said, then. After everything he just said, then. One second. One second. Yes. After everything you just said now, do you retract that claim that the universe could be that necessary thing? Mm. Could be that necessary here, thing. What? You can go Spinoza. Yeah, so, so, so the universe is the necessary being, no, no, no. And, I, and it is not subject to. I know, I know Spinoza. I, I know, I know what he said. As he just, but he just explained to you what. One second, one second. He just explained to you why the universe can't be the necessary thing based upon it being contingent. No, yeah, no, so, no it so, can't be a necessary yeah. thing. Spinoza doesn't have any answers. And it's I've read his literature very well. On other things, no, the universe exactly. It is, it is the, whole, the universe uh, depends yeah, on so others. So That's why I was excommunicated from the from Judaism. Well, if we define a necessary thing. As that no, Carl. Brilliant. Yeah. So your don't know's gone now. Yeah. But, uh, right. Yes. Okay. Great. 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 There we go. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. Yes. All right. So if the universe is not the necessary thing, and an infinite regret, and an infinite multiverse cannot be the necessary thing, the question is now. Now we have a necessary thing, which is not the universe and not the infinite multiverse. Now we say that necessary thing has. We've already described that by ne by virtue of it being necessary, there are certain ca characteristics or properties that you can say it has. But in the in the in the in the logical scaffolding. That we that, that our arguments exist in, and and under your de our definitions that we've agreed upon, you are right. There has to be some necessary uh, being. To be the so, what's that question? But, but, the necessary being. But I, uh, yes. What's but, that, what's that? Hang on. <laughs> it has to be the necessary being for the explanation of the universe. Yes. But I but I'm, I I I like locking things in. And but I, I, but, I, I, but I, as I said quite early on, I I'm prepared to quite openly admit that I. I don't know, and I'm I'm well, you actually know speaking but, 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 well, yeah, of yeah, well, you, you do you know. know. Yeah. I, 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 I will say under under the argument that you have laid out, and I have agreed with. Brilliant. I have to think about. It. I hope this goes online, so I can okay. look oh, at it again, online. think about it. I'll come back next All week, right, and we can talk That's about brilliant. it again. No problem. But let me, we, let, we got yes, think okay, about it. Cheers. Have a great night. I've got my my
Yeah. Anyway, this is good. Next time, try to come without this. Sorry? So the argument from particularity. Ah, particularization. Yeah. So what's that? So so what? What is is that? So to prove, so basically, there are some attributes of God we say we cannot prove logically. We admit that. So for example, we do believe that God is loving in the sense that He's al-Wadud and so on. The Quran says that, or that He's forgiving, or that He's, you know, there's attributes that we. Yeah. Yeah, I think you need to tell him. Sorry, sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. To yeah, no, that's fine. Well, explain it to him without bringing religion into it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But what he should, uh, uh, you know, without bringing the Quran. And yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna bring. Yeah. But that's what that's without what I'm saying. With for, we as Muslims believe in a God with X amount of attributes, yeah. right? All Christians believe in <laughs> something else. So, so what we're saying is we're not bringing that to the table right now. What we're saying is there are some attributes which can be reasoned from first principles. For example, necessity, pre-eternality, post-eternality. Uh, and we would say also creative capacity, like where he said that the power to change the situation. Obviously, if the universe is moving, is changing or something, you can make an argument clearly that there is a maintainer, there is a sustainer of the universe, the Lord, the Rabb, or we would call it whatever term you want to use. We could also make the argument quite clearly uh, of particular or of the will of God. And uh, the argument is usually made in, in the literature it's used, made, made that case. That the universe has, in uh, the, uh, the universe, and all that is in it, if understood in abstraction is one way, or, if understood in abstraction, yes, is one way, not another. And if it's one way or another, then that indicates that some something has had an effect on it. That there was an external sorting agent of sorts which made it one way and not another and if there was an external if there was an external sorting agent for why the universe is one way and not another in abstraction that indicates that some dis choice has been made on it and if some choice has been made on it that's exactly what a will is so we would say that that's the evidence of the will of God so if the universe is full of contingent parts yeah. it could have been otherwise there has to have been a particular choice from the necessary to make it this contingent way as opposed to another Beautiful, but the only thing I would put to that to just clear it up is that in abstraction. So in other words, because someone could argue using a deterministic worldview that well, how, uh, you know, we believe that nothing could have been nothing could have been otherwise because everything is determined of an antecedent causal chain of events. But we're saying in abstraction. In other words, this bottle in abstraction. Okay, when you when you think of this bottle uh, in and of itself, there's nothing within this bottle which indicates necessity. So from that perspective, it's contingent in and of itself in abstraction without consideration of an antecedent causal chain. And if that is submitted to, and it has to be because there's no, it's a defeat of all the arguments, then there's an external sorting agent which made this bottle one shape, one way, rather than another. And if that's the case of this bottle and everything within the universe, then that indicates that there was an external sorting agent which sorted the universe to be one way rather than another. Well, can I say uh, th thank you? And um, yes. you, you, uh, I, there has to be some necessary being, perhaps, um, but it will, you'll take. I, I'm with you there. I'm, I'm. You know, you've slid. You slid the skepticism beneath my legs, and now I'm with you on there. But it would take a hell of a lot more to to get me to believe in some particular deity. Right At That's this right. point, I could be believing on some sort of claw claw munching tooth covered beast. But that would be the problem with uh, that, yeah, that. That that be, be that beast that, think, would be contingent because yes. it's got claws. Well, oh, very good. But this is a thing. I think yeah, this is what I said originally. I think you know God does have attributes. Yes, yes, but not parts that you can break off and put on. But we said you said mathematics. That's why I said you, yeah. do you agree conceptual parts or physical parts because his teeth are physical. But you said yeah, so, you so, agreed that good, good conceptual parts are also. So, oh, no, no, you're, you're right. You're, you're right to you're right to flesh this out just on this point quickly because I think it's important. Uh, in myriology, which is the study of yeah, parts and holes, yeah, yeah, the study of parts and holes is called myriology, right? Mm -hmm. There are nine definitions of what a part is. Nine. Nine definitions of what a part is. One of them is what you've mentioned. So if I say it's part of his personality, what's your name again, bro? Strabo. Strabo is part of Strabo's personality that he has a charismatic uh, and witty uh, way about him, yeah? It's part of his personality. Now, I'm saying something different. It's part of Muhammad Hajab's personality that he's tall, dark, and he's handsome. He's a great orator <laughs> and a of, And he has a vast crowd of followers. No, no, it's part of it's part of the personality of 
of uh, of Hamza Maya, the online sensation, <laughs> that he's cutthroat, no nonsense person that gets straight to business and leaves his his opponents dumbfounded. Anything can be said. What that part here is different to the part when we're talking about something which can be removed and added. So when when I'm making the argument, I'm not saying I'm using the part, the word part, or pe basically I'm using the word. Yes, I understand. So yes, truth yes. can be removed, yes. but not his all loving. Beautiful. Quality. Excellent. Right, but that I, I still don't see. Mm. So it's, it's actually within the definition of the part. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a uh, yes, that's what you're saying, Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me let me come back tomorrow. You flung a great argument. It's been kicking around for about two thousand years. So I I will come back. It's, it's quite a hard thing to come up with a good response on the spot. But thank yeah. you. It was very can I ask good. One last thing, thank you. Alex. Do you think we can infer intelligence as well for this necessary being? Well, I think the very tools that we're using to discuss. Felix. It. Felix Block, so, 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 so if you're inferring, so if, if everything in the universe is contingent, then there has to be some sort of choice abstracted that made this, made the universe this way particularly. I don't think there's any way of knowing between a thing that's made a choice to make it like, intelligent choice okay. to make can it take this way, or, can I show a in the way, or some some necessary cause which which grounds all of existence, but which could not have made another can, existence. Can I present my exhibit A? Sure. DNA. Yeah. You tell me of anything you know of in this universe that you're you're, you're aware of. Yeah. That, that contains information that isn't the result of an intelligent agency. Anything. Anything you can think of in your human experience. Sorry. So the, the contains information. It contains information yeah. that isn't the result of a uh, of a uh, intelligent agency. Anything. A photo. A photo. A photo. The photon traveling from the sun. Yeah. Contains information about its being and where it came from. No. 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 We're not talking about data. We're talking about information, coding. That's what what makes it. Yeah. So okay. for example, you read so, a book. You see a book. So a plant. A, a plant. Yeah, a plant has DNA. Oh, oh, okay. And where's the DNA? This is the whole point. The plant is made of DNA. The DNA. How how does the how does the DNA become a plant? Uh, sorry. How does the cell become a plant? It's because of the information in the DNA, isn't it? So what I want to know is, I'm, my claim is this: the DNA inside, uh, sorry, the, the the information inside the DNA has to be based on my human experience, the result of an intelligent agency, because I know of nothing that isn't, that contains it coding in this way, that isn't the result of an intelligent agency. Right, so you, you admit it's the limits of your knowledge that are saying to you. No, no, I'm saying to you, DNA contains information, and I'm asking you, where's that from? Where does the information come right, from? Right, so, so all we can conclude on that is that it came from something. So it came from something. Which we do not know. But we've already concluded as well that everything within the universe came from what? Listen. Necessary being. Therefore, if we find intelligence, yeah. Yeah. where's the intelligence come from? Yeah. Where's it, where, so we, I, we find I, don't, it? I don't think there's a way of knowing between an intelligent being that made things this way as opposed to another, or no, 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 something no. that made can things I recommend this a, way. Can I recommend a book you to read? Sure. It's Signature in the Cell. The Argument for Intelligent Design. Yeah. If you get hold, it's by Stephen Meyer. Yeah, read that book. Have you read it? No. Do you know, I, I want to add to this yeah. point, to bolster this. The way I make the argument is as follows. I don't know what your stance is on fine tuning. Like, there's yeah. different ways of understanding it. But we, what we know as a fact is the universe exists. And what we also know is that it allows human life to exist. So the universe, whether you want to call it, whether you want to express that through the electromagnetic constant and its so-called fine tuning or the gravitational, or if you want, as I would take the approach, to do so through the underpinnings of science itself. Itself. like the fact that science is regular that it's uniform and that it's stable these are three facts of science which are presuppositional to any experimental method anyway that the, so one could phrase it in the following way that the, the universe is regular stable and uniform enough to allow human life to exist would you agree with that it's, it's almost undisputable it's, it's, also probability it's of that. You love probability. So, so the only problem I have with that stance is that had the universe not been stable enough to support human life we wouldn't be here to wonder about No, I know, but that's the anthropic principle. No, he's, he's referring to the weak anthropic principle. Yeah. But that's been destroyed in the literature. I don't need to go there. It's even I mean, John please, Leslie... Please do, because I'm not a fan. No, but what's, uh, John, what's John, the John Leslie... No, no, he's, do you know what he's saying? Let me... Let me, let me oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm, he's saying that, like, this is, this is what, you know, Richard Dawkins 
once again, he said, he said that, okay, look, even forget about the word probability. We can use it, but I'm, I'm saying, the, do you know what I'm saying? I'm saying the, the probability is zero. Yeah. I'm not even saying 0 0.1. I'm saying, do you know why? I'm saying that the, a universe that is uh, regular, stable, and uniform, okay, that sustains human life is a fact that we have. That the universe is regular enough and stable enough and uniform enough to sustain human life or any life. Yeah? That's a fact. Now you have two options. One option is impossible, one option is necessary. Either that this has come from a necessary existence, which we've already argued for before, or this doesn't come from a necessary existence. It comes from nothing. I'm saying it's impossible for this reality to come from nothing. It's actually impossible. Yeah, where, where we disagree on whether or not that was a choice. Yeah, but we have the particularization argument for that. Yeah, yeah, so but that, only to, uh, that only shows that if everything here is contingent, then it must have come from a choice. If everyone, if, uh, if yeah, yeah. If every constituent of the universe is contingent, yeah. 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 Have been chosen intelligently to be this way. Yeah, exactly. So that's that, all does, that doesn't rule out the possibility that everything is right now is necessarily as it is. Okay, no, okay, great, great. great. I, I'm happy you came with this because I considered this and thought about it. Okay. Necessity of things within the universe is not a disqualifier to the fact that it comes from a necessary existence. Let me tell you why. The category of necessary fact is different from the category of necessary existence. I'll give you an example. I, I agree. Yeah. So one actually presupposes the other. 2 plus 2 equals 4 is a necessary fact. Whether you employ a nominalist framework or a conceptual one or you believe in a Neoplatonic one, you have to accept that 2 plus 2 equals 4. And that's necessary. There's no way of manipulating that reality. However, that necessary fact that 2 plus 2 equals 4 is contingent on the existence of necessary things. And so existent, the necessary existence, in the category of existence, you have the necessary existence. In the category of facts, you have many necessary facts. In other words, all necessary facts depend upon the necessary existence because existence presupposes the expression of facts. So for, for what I'm saying is, even if you say the universe is necessarily this way, we wouldn't actually disagree with you. We would say, if it's necessarily this way, it's not a choice that's dichotomous or trichotomous or otherwise aside from the choice which is that the universe it relies on the necessary existence. In fact, it's in line with that because you can have something which is necessary in the universe, but only so because it's depending upon the necessary thing. Yes. So in other words, so this bottle... So, if you have yeah. a necessary being yeah. and a contingent universe, yeah. you necessarily have a choice to make it that way instead of another. And if you have a necessary being and a necessary universe, then there's the possibility that that necessary being created it that way and could not have done otherwise. I'll say that one more time. I'll say that one more time. So, so if you have a necessary being yes. and a an, an universe which is necessarily this way, Yes. then there's the possibility that that necessary being had no opportunity to choose otherwise, that it necessarily created the universe as it is like this. I accept, but this, here's where we need to be careful, because as I say, this bottle is contingent in the way I was very careful to say the word in abstraction. In and of itself, this bottle, there's nothing about it which is necessary. It, there was some time, it has a lifespan. The fact that this bottle had an inception contradicts the fact that it's necessary in, its, in and of itself. However, that the fact... A, a necessary being or a necessary fact? Uh, a, necessary, uh, exist, a necessary thing. Whatever this bottle is, yeah? yeah? Well, so the, the, fact Entity. the fact that it had a, a start. Yeah, that means in, in and of itself, in and of itself, this bottle is yeah, not yeah, yeah, necessary. This, this, this bottle as a whole yeah. is not eternal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but the fact that that bottle came into existence at the moment that it did, yes. why is that yes. contingent? No, no, you're right. That isn't. We're saying that you could, there's two perspectives. From one perspective, this bottle is contingent. From another perspective, if it's connected to the antecedent causal chain from a deterministic perspective or to the necessary existence, then it actually becomes necessary. Yeah. So it's necessary in and of uh, it's, it's contingent uh, with respect to itself, but necessary with respect to its connection with the necessary existence. Yeah. So does, does that make sense? J just just to finish yeah. off. Therefore, even if we say that the laws of nature are necessary, even if we say that the laws of nature are necessary, they cannot be necessary in and of them or uh, as a result of themselves. They have to be necessary in respect to the necessary existence. Or the antecedent causal chain, which we would say ends with the necessary existence. Does that make sense? So there's two uh, there's two aspects of it. 
in and of itself an abstraction, this bottle is contingent. But when connected to the necessary existence, it's necessary. We believe in something called, as Muslims, Qadr. I'm not going to bring it religious concepts, but this is, we believe this bottle from one perspective is contingent. It's actually our belief. So this is sorted out. From one perspective, it's contingent. But from another perspective, it was always meant to be. Because God, he decided for that. When the, God decided, then there was no other way that this bottle was going to be except for that way. So there is a kind of, not determinism, we, we are compatibilists. Uh, determinism that we do believe though. You see what I mean? But the point is, is that even if we say, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because classically the fine-tuning argument like William Lane Craig and those guys, when they make it, they say that it's either chance. This is my question. Yeah. Do you believe the universe is deliberate or accidental? So you, so you mean deliberately it's, it's this way and it has to be this way? No, no, no. Way. The universe came into existence deliberately or it came into existence accidentally? I don't think we can know. Right. So if it came into existence deliberately, yeah, or, oh, sorry, accidentally, what are the chances it would be the way it is? Because you'll make the probability. I'm not sure we can know that either. Well, no, but the well, but Catherine. But so, so if 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 accidentally then how many then, ways? All right, how many ways? Been, how many ways? So this one, one over right. the number of ways. If, if we're been. talking about an accident, sorry, I, I know. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Take because it because we're talking about an accidental universe, let's take that as a perspective. You don't know either way, so let's look at the accidental idea. But what, one over big, or so, one, one over huge. Uh, well, there's more. I think there's more particles in the universe when it comes to the zeros that would be on that probability. Yeah, yeah, but but it's still a number that's greater than zero. Yeah, but. Okay, if I ask you a very simple question, yeah, um, who, who wrote the works of William Shakespeare? Was it William Shakespeare or a guy claiming to William Shakespeare? Or was it a billion monkeys on a billion typewriters writing over a billion years? It would take longer than a billion years. Okay, is it probable? Is, is it zero or is it possible? It's possible that it was, well... Right, right. It's possible, it's possible. Well, no, no, because the number of monkeys that have been alive aren't sufficient for the amount of time we've had. <laughs> I think you're making his case the for The point him. I'm making is very, very yeah. simple. The odds of a billion monkeys, oh, right, over a billion Having years, written the works of Shakespeare, right, the works of Shakespeare yeah. is the same probability of this universe fine-tuning itself by accident to create life, support life. Okay. That's, that's, that's the probability. And your mate, Stabo, or Stavo, what's his name? Strabo. Strabo. <laughs> he came here, Stop. it's more probable that the universe is a product of itself and created itself and there is no creator and all of these things. And these are the probabilities you work for. And it gets worse when you look at the probability of carbon forming in stars, accidentally. And it gets even worse about the probabilities of the single cell creating um, DNA, sorry, uh, creating uh, the DNA uh, accident, randomly mutating for something beneficial. You've got that prob <laughs> You've got the probability in biology that's absurd. You've got the probability in chemistry, which is absurd, and the probability in physics. Yeah, so had, had the laws so of the universe been even slightly different in some respects, life would not be sustained. No, but no, that's, that's one way of making the argument, and that's fine. And he's being generous with you because he's saying that there's some possibility. I'm saying that it's impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because okay, I'm saying. Okay, but why? Cause, cause, you, so so in terms, if it's even slightly possible, the fact that it did happen is the only reason that we can sit here and wonder about why it did. No, but you're going so, to so the anthropic so principle. The only circumstances in which we can even ask the question, how probable was it that this was created by accident, are those in which that small probability came to act out. No, but, but, well, or, yeah. or, 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 all right, either that small probability happened random chance, or it's deliberately made the way it is perfectly from the beginning. Okay, sure, but you're still set there 50-50 either way. No, no, no. No, it's, it's definitely not 50-50, yeah. <laughs> 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 how is that 50-50? Yeah. The yeah. probability no, no, I, is I toss more, a coin every morning, the, man. There's more particles in the universe <laughs> And there no, are no, zeros in look, that probability. Hamza's making a, a very strong point here, and I think deep down, so many things up. deep down, I think you agree with him. But here's what I, I want to make okay, add so insult to. Why is it zero? I'm saying it's zero. I say it's not, I'm saying it's worse than zero. I'm saying it's impossible. I'm, I'm saying it's, it's the equivalent of a squared circle. Okay, why? The reason why is because if the universe can't do anything by itself, to itself, like that. In other words, what I'm saying is, when we say classically, the, the way that the fine-tuning argument has been made, when I was growing up, the way I've heard it being made, is that there's three options. Either it's necessity, or it's or it's um, uh, chance, or it's uh, what do you call it? Uh, the third thing is that it's creation or causation or something, yeah. That something. Or, 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 or creation or something like that, or design. That's, that's these are the three. There's either design 
or necessity or, or what's ne the difference between design and necessity? That's a good question. That's my question, actually. When I was in university one time, I had a conversation with a very famous Christian uh, academic called Alistair McGrath. And I said to him, I had a conversation after one lesson, and I said to him, look, I don't necessarily agree. I was checking my work with him. I said, I don't necessarily agree that there's a difference between necessity and design. Because as we've just described, if the necessary existence designs something, it becomes necessary. So there's no, there's no um, dichotomy between necessity and design. So already, you, one would have to justify the, 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 why we're choosing A over B in that situation. So already, you can have necessity and design already in the, uh, the, same, in the same space. When it comes to chance, I actually think chance is impossible. Because what are we saying here? The universe is regular and stable and uniform to the extent whereby we know that human life or any life exists within it. How can that happen from, how can that happen? Either it comes from nothing, which is impossible because something cannot come from nothing, or it comes from itself, which entails a self-contradiction because something cannot self-create or generate. Something cannot self-generate, yeah, like that. Or, no, but we don't say it's self-generating, we're saying it's always been like that, necessarily, because if it generates, it indicates non-existence to existence. Yeah, one of the qualities of the necessary being is eternality. Yeah, so it's, so it's not self-generating in that sense. I know what you're saying, but it's not self-generating in the sense that it didn't exist and it existed. So it goes back to this tri trichotomy. Either, the, so the universe, the, 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 the universe, the, 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 the laws of nature could not be such that the way that, or that the universality, sorry, the uniformity and regularity and um, uh, stability of the universe can allow human being uh, to exist or human life to exist or any life to exist. That can't be the case as a matter of impossibility. One would have to explain how something like that, the fact that the universe is regular, stable and uniform, such that it allows human life or any life to exist, how that either comes from nothing or that it makes itself. There's no way of basically, this whole idea of chance, my, my point is what do you mean by chance? Chance itself is something which, some, something which requires an explanation. Chance is something which we don't understand. Chance is the expression of what we don't understand. That's what chance is. What is chance? If you don't mind me asking, what is chance? I want to know what chance is. No one, I've read a lot of philosophical literature, like yourself. No one has told me what chance is. Chance doesn't exist. I'm saying chance does not exist. The word chance, I don't believe in chance. I disbelieve in chance. I'm skeptical of chance. Chance doesn't, the word chance, the thing, chance, the concept of chance does not exist. I'm saying it now. I want some atheist to tell me, or anybody to tell me, how to prove that chance exists. I dare, double dare, triple dare, double, triple dare. Anybody to tell Sorry, bro. I'm going to pray. Do you know? I want to know, I want to know, I want to know this God of chance of the atheist. It's like the atheist God of chance I want to know the evidence of that God's existence of yours so if you say there's a chance I want to know your God's existence that your chance God the atheist God of chance I want to know this God's existence called chance have you got any evidence can I see the chance so, so we already agreed that if, if the universe exists, if it exists in this way by chance then it has to have been chosen to be this way intelligently I don't believe in chance okay, okay so, so even if do you believe in chance necessary, no so, so chance seems to be like stuff, stuff you don't know the outcome about. Yeah. So there's still some mechanism underlying it, it seems like it. Okay, well, what I'm so saying is, yeah. I mean, it's a quant quantum physics. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. Chance is, that, yeah. chance is the expression of that which we don't know. Like, for example, if something happened, and I don't know how to explain that, I say it happened randomly. But that's just an expression of my own ignorance. It does not say anything about, is there an entity out there called chance? Is there somebody called, can I put chance under a microscope? Can I reason that chance exists some logical way? Chance is the best friend of the atheist. But chance doesn't exist. I want to break it to the atheist. Break it, break it up. If the world is like this by necessity, yeah. that doesn't mean that we can know that it was chosen to be like this by necessity. Oh, it's back. Yeah, I not, yes. That's no random event. Oh. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> For a brief intermission to get some more whiskey down me. Oh, yes. Back. Well, that didn't happen by chance either. No. no. So, no, so if, if the universe is necessarily like this, yeah, it doesn't mean that we can know that it was chosen intelligently to be like this, or if the necessary cause could do no other than make it this way. No, we are, we are, as I say, logically you can try and make both arguments. But what I'm saying is that the argument for particularization, the fact that the, the 
universe is one way rather than another, such that instantiations of the universe, okay. particulars within it, are... How, how do you know that your very entertaining of the concept of another is not necessarily God? Say that again? So, so how, how do you know that your very entertaining of other possibilities yeah. isn't a necessary event in the universe? Okay, so contingency is not just understood by understanding that it could be another way. Anything that could have... Anything that was out of existence then became existence. Anything that's generated is, is contingent. The universe okay, okay. It's, has it's, things it's which... Existence yeah. Yeah. Is, is contingent in the sense you're saying between the necessary being and the contingent universe. Yes, but, in that sense. But, but the yes. fact that yes. it became contingently like it is, yeah. has been and was, that might be a necessary fact. The fact that it has become what it is because... Yeah, that, but we link that back to necessary being. Because a determinist could say that, but they will only do so because of the anti even causal chain. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I, I don't see how we can, from this, determine whether or not it was all intelligently chosen, or if the necessary being could not do otherwise than make it this way. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I mean, you can you could try and make this argument, but what I'm saying is that the necessary being, okay, it, the, the the point of is necessity only links to his choice, or this necessary being's choice. Let me use neutral language. Its choice. It's, it's doing. Yeah. Its choice. No problem. What I'm saying is if that's the case necessity is, is, is explicable because of the will not despite it do you get what I'm trying to say it doesn't so in other words necessity does not negate the will it emerges from it but not necessarily we would say it's necessary because it emerges from the necessary anything that is anything that emerges from a necessary being is necessary yes yeah yeah but so but, but from, from what we just what we discussed we can't know that the necessary being has choice surely everything that emerges from a necessary being is dependent. No, no, I, I'm saying we can know through particularization. I, we can know through the fact that the universe has within it contingent things which could can be conceived of in another way. For example, yeah, the, no, so yeah. conceived, but you, you said this, this conception of, of other possibilities is not just from our ideas of other possibilities, it's outside of conception. What do you mean? So, so you, you said earlier when, when I said that. The, okay, not just okay, sorry, okay, let me let me let me let me tweak it, make it even better. Something can be another way, not just because of its conception, because it can be another way without an absurdity occurring. Okay, but how, how would you know? Let me give you an example. So, for example, if this, if I have a white, uh, if I have a white uh, board, I can paint it and make it red. So, if I can prove the fact that it can be another way, improve, improve, on not, improved not grounds. At that time. What do you mean? So, so right now, there's there's, there's a bunch of different causal processes. Okay. That have, that have determined in a certain sense, that this water bottle is here. Yeah, okay, fine, fine. And then but, but when you when you move it from left to right, yeah. it's a bunch of other different causal processes that have determined that it's going to be there at that time. Yeah, so you're bringing time into this. Yeah. I, say, I say time is irrelevant to this. And in fact, you can say you can argue time doesn't exist. The, the idea of time doesn't exist, just like chance. The argument can be made. What is time? Time is distance over speed. And that's not relevant to the necessary existence. Whether time exists or not, it's not relevant to the necessary existence. Oh, there you are. No, that's okay, but this, this water bottle can't be in two places at once. Okay. So it could be necessary that it is in this place now. Just like with the whiteboard, it's contingent which colour it is. But at any one moment, okay. it is either one colour or it is another. If I but take the whiteboard out of existence, does any absurdity occur? Right. right. This indicates that the whiteboard is not necessary. Necessary, because by ex necessity is juxtaposed or otherwise or, contrasted with impossibility. Or it was necessary until the moment that you took it out of existence. That's impossible. Why? Because a ne necessary thing can never be taken. A necessary thing can never not be necessary at any time. So, so, so the whiteboard wasn't necessary. Yeah. What are you talking about? But, but the whiteboard's existence for a certain amount of time until it stopped existing. Yeah, that, that we already could have, could have been necessary. No, that, that we agree already. Right. But, but from from those facts, we cannot know. If if the universe was caused by an intentional choice or by just something that could not have created otherwise. What I'm saying is, if, if there are things in the universe which are contingent, such that if they are taken out of the universe, that no absurdity would occur, such that they can be proven to be exist, uh, contingent through generation, and or such that you can conceptualize them differently through some metaphysical process, mental process, any of those things, then in that case, they are contingent in and of 
themselves necessarily only because of their connection with something which is necessary. What I'm saying, therefore, is if it's contingent in and, in and of itself in abstraction, that's evidence of the fact that some change has happened to it or that it is the way it is because of something other than itself. And if that's the case, for example, let me give you an easy example. The egg. The egg changes into a chick and then the chick cracks open, become chicken, blah, 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 blah. I'm not making an argument necessarily of potential versus actual, but you can. It can, it can, you, can you can make the argument. Something which requires something outside of it in order to change indicates that the finitude of that thing, the limitation of that thing, and the contingency of that thing. And the universe as a whole exhibits those traits. What I'm saying, therefore, that the universe, okay, is contingent because of that, and that, number two, something is acting upon the universe. Something is acting upon it. Now, if something is acting upon the universe, it's acting upon it to be A rather than B, because... Okay, so this is, this, this is where I'm not getting this. So yeah. Why, so, so because of all of these things, it's, it's they're contingent beings that can exist without the universe going into some logical error. Why does that mean that it was acting on it in such a way to be A rather than B? Why, why is B even a real possibility? Why can't it have been the case that A was the only ever real possibility? Okay, B is... The act I get your, I get your question. It could only ever have been to make A. I understand your question. It can be A... So yeah, yeah. To yeah. yeah. no, no. A over B is a real possibility in abstraction. Meaning, if I were to conceive of the thing which has been changed I or, uh, and or has been generated and or can be conceived differently, that thing in abstraction, without connection to any necessary being in and of itself, that thing, that thing, yeah, is contingent. Uh, and or has something acted upon it, yeah, something... But then, but, then the, but then the choice only exists in abstraction. Yeah, what I'm saying is that since it has those traits, A over B, yeah, which, which we know, there's nothing necessary in abstraction of a bottle being this shape. I could squash it. I could squash this bottle. I could squash it, you know? I don't know why I just said that three times. <laughs> <laughs> I can squash this ball. I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, so therefore, there's not nothing necessary about the shape. However, from another perspective that it comes from like a, do you know what I mean? Uh, so I agree with you. I know what you're saying. You're right that from one perspective, this ball is determined. I'm saying that clearly. But that's from the perspective that is connected to the determiner. Simple as that. Yeah, but, but even in the sense that it's contingent, I don't think that necessitates that the thing that, that grounds its existence, the thing upon which existence it's, it relies, has this intentional and intelligent will. Okay, to. no problem. You're having an issue with... Back to my original uh, question. Yeah. Is the universe deliberate or accidental? All right. I need no, to pray. No, because no, it can be accidental. <laughs> I, I need to pray back a bit, yeah? I, I'll be uh, back maybe, yeah? I'm just going to pray and come back. Yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah. If you're still here, you're sorry. Wrap up. We can, we can wrap it up. Right. What, what, think about what you said, yeah? But what we can and then do, come yeah. to Islam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, what we can do if you're up for it, yeah? yeah. I'll do something on my channel, yeah? We'll, yeah, perfect. We'll, yeah. We'll basically, we'll bring you. We'll bring invite, support as well. Invite yeah. Felix, invite Strabble. Maybe yeah. when you're not. He's a very, uh, very nice guy. Yeah. And we'll have these conversations. And we'll do it online if you want. We can do it online. It's not because you don't need to come to the park. No, honestly, you're invited to come to the mosque in Ramadan. You break fast with you, me, you, and not with that, but something else. <laughs> you know, or you can come on his channel. You're, invite, you're a good guy. I like yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank it's you very much. Very so, so happy yeah. To yeah. Honestly, because I wasn't going to come to the park today. I decided yes, okay. I wasn't going to come. I'm and then, very glad you did. I'm happy. I'm glad I came. I'm glad I came. Yeah. We feel like to get this conversation. It's, it's and very, uh, very happy. Very good conversation, you know man. You know, because they they make Yao believes in God. Yeah. And I'm speaking to him, and he says, "Oh, my friends, yeah, they have really good arguments against God." Yeah. And then Felix and Strabo come. Wow. Wow. And then I see you as oh, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. Yeah, yeah, sure. right. I'm gonna go and pray. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, bro. Yeah. Bye. Anytime. You're invited to anything you want. Yeah. Sure. Oh, sorry, I'll probably send a bit. Okay. I'm